there's two type of people that do jujitsu. The, the um, there's not necessarily the weekend warrior, but the part -time, the part time sport where you know two to four times a week. Yep. Uh, and you know their wife, uh, husband, kids, family, job, and then they go to the sport. And then there's then there's the actual athlete that is right. doing six seven days a week. M most of most of them do two a days, and in combination with teaching jujitsu, but Basically, they're they're around jujitsu like four to like eight hours on a day to day basis, yep. and the ones that compete also travel, which yes, is a, it's, a, it's sure. another, that's another big whammy. So, yep. from what I'm hearing from what you're saying is, I think the best plan of action, especially if you if you plan on doing jujitsu, is to come up with some type of consistent plan that you can follow on a weekly basis. Because yep. if, if you, especially if you're married or, or have kids or whatever it may be, if you, if you don't plan your food out throughout the week, you're not going to be able to get the proper amount of calories, get the proper amount of nutrition, and then not recover quite as fast. And then that increases your risk, like you were talking about earlier, that happened to you. You increase your risk of injury. Uh, it takes you longer to recover. If you're a little bit older like me, it takes even longer to recover. Yeah. Um, so and those are things that kind of there, and for the athlete as well. One, one of the things that I feel like with the athlete, and I see that a lot, is they, they kind of yo-yo themselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. So when they're when they're prepping for a fight that they might get paid at, uh, like a big event, they're they're very strict on their diet, and they're they're depleting themselves down to get to that that whatever weight that they want to get to, and then when they get off of it they have a tendency to go the, like the 180 opposite direction where they're eating everything in sight, right. which their body can somewhat take it for two reasons. I think one, because of the amount of activity that they're doing Two, because usually, usually that high level athlete is usually on the younger side as well. Right. So we're talking like a 19 to 25 year old, your body can take that, that, that uh, uh, nutritional abuse from going from one egg to the other. So what would you recommend for both like the average individual to do and then for like the athlete to do like approach of like how to eat on a weekly basis? Yeah. Um, honestly, I don't think it, uh, like, I guess the approach I don't think is really any different. Um, you know, obviously an athlete may have to worry about meal timing a little more cause they're probably training more than once a day. Um, so, you know, the, the timing of meals may become a little more important there. And then obviously, the calorie intake is going to become a little bit greater, right? So you're going to have to put, place more of a focus on, on, on eating because it just gets tough, right? Your schedule is busy. You're highly active. Got to make sure you're refueling, replenishing everything. Um, I mean, but even just, you know, the weekend warrior type or just your average, you know, person who's just into it, they're doing it say five days a week or whatever um, while going to work and things like that. Again, I, I think to be successful with any diet, it just has to be something, like you said, that there's got to be some thought that's put into it, and then it's got to be something that's sustainable, right? So like you talk about these, these guys, they, they do things that aren't sustainable in order to you know, get themselves ready for a specific fight or whatever it may be. But I always just wish people would find a little, like a little like less extreme and more sustainable way to do these certain things. So I, that's kind of the, the thing I push with everybody is just like, creating healthy habits that that are like they have to be for you though they can't be you you know like i i was you know if you if you're not if you don't cook or something don't all of a sudden think you're going to become a gourmet chef and meal prep for yourself seven days a week and do all these great things like just accept the fact like all right i don't cook so i need to figure out a way to make this work for me right so whether that's making a list of the four or five delis that are on your route um, back and forth to work in the gym every day, find a few good restaurants, whatever it is that you can pop into, you know, that you can get a good, a good, like, you know, vegetable, good lean protein and a good carbohydrate, things like that. So I always tell people too, like, just don't go like so far outside your comfort zone thinking you're going to like do these amazing things when like in, in reality, people are really going to probably take the path of least resistance. Right. So